What's up everybody, my name is Tim Rosswick and today we're talking about the top things that you should polish in your game. And I wanna talk about these in order, but I also wanna say specifically that the reason I picked three things that you should polish is not that you shouldn't polish everything else, but this is more aimed towards like, if you're in a game jam and you have some extra time, you wanna figure out what things you can polish or like, if you got an extra month or an extra week on your game or whatever it is and you wanna just hit the most important things and polish those, that's kind of what this video is about. So uh, let's count backwards and kind of go on, and this is completely my opinion, just throw that out there. Um, everyone will have varying opinions, but my opinion, the things that I've seen that make, make the most difference in polish uh, are these three things. So number three, working backwards, number three I think is uh, feel, game feel. Uh, and this has to do with uh, items that happen in the world, explosions, uh, crazy things, uh, the way the camera moves. Um, when something happens in the world, some kind of interaction, uh, it needs to feel good. And this is really abstract concept because, like, how do you make it feel good, right? Well, you, there's no specific way on how to make things feel good but you have to kind of figure out specifically like what your game is trying to convey. If it's a, a shooting, uh, shooting a gun, you want the shooting to feel nice, you want the hits to feel nice, you want all that stuff to, to feel good uh, while the player is playing it. Um, this, for like shooting, for example, there are a lot of different things that you can polish. Uh, screen shake is a big thing that people add. Um, a lot of specifics as far as like bassiness in the audio, which we'll get to in a second. Uh, a lot of people like to add um, pause effects when you when you kill some an enemy or something like that. Um, and th they're just little things that you can do to kind of increase the game feel. Uh, if there is a story set up or there's something important, uh, letting the player know like right up front, like, okay, this is the setup. This is what's happening. This is why this person is bad. This is why this person is good. If you just throw somebody in and they don't, they're supposed to kill people or something like that, like there's no, it can take away some of that feeling there. So really focus on the feeling. Number two, counting backwards, uh, is feedback. And I, th I feel like feedback is a subset of feel, but I throw this in here because I think it's really, really important. When I say feedback, I don't mean feedback from players, that player game, I mean feedback uh, when the player touches a button and interacts with something. So for example, on something as simple as a menu, when they hover over the menu item, does the menu item light up or does it make a sound or does it do something? Uh, if there is, if, if they're shooting, for example, um, can they see the shoot animation or the knife animation or whatever it is happen as soon as they hit the button? Uh, is there something in the game that tells them that yes, the game recognizes your input? Uh, and the quicker this is, the better. So a lot of people, like for example, let's, let's say a, a, a run animation. If you have some kind of, or let's say like a melee animation, right? If your animation is like 10 frames long and it takes seven frames to get your knife up there and then you hit, it's gonna feel really clunky and slow. That's why I said it's a subset of game feel because it's about how it feels. But the feedback specifically uh, is making that tighter, make, letting the player know that it's powerful, that it's quick, that it happens when they press the button. The more responsive that you can make it, the better the feedback on the, the player gets from the game. So they have a subset of control outside of the game, right? They have a keyboard, they have a mouse, they have a controller, whatever it is, they're pressing buttons. This digital world needs to give them feedback, visual, audio, vibration, whatever it is, but it needs to let them know that the game understands their commands and they can or can't do it depending on the situation. Like if they, if they can't run anymore, you know, letting them know that somehow by stopping the animation or uh, vibrating when they hit a wall on the controller or just something like that. Giving that feedback uh, really, really, really makes sense. And this is where um, a lot of little details can be added in your game to kind of make sure that it, it, it has good feedback and the player knows that the game understands what they're trying to do. There's nothing worse than like trying to press a jump button in a game and like having the player not jump and you don't know why, right? Or like there's plenty of times where I've clicked on something and it just... 
it, in the game, technically it did something, but I don't know it did something because it doesn't show me that it did something or it doesn't make a sound or it doesn't give me feedback on like that what I did actually mattered. So feedback's number two. Number one, the best thing that you can polish, especially with limited amount of time, if you can't polish anything else, uh, polish audio. Audio makes such a big impact on gameplay. And uh, I, this was in my Ludum Dare Tips uh, video because I said that if you have to choose between graphics and audio, choose audio. Audio is, I feel like, is more important than graphics because if you have a game that's just basic cubes and stuff and you put in some kick-ass audio, some, some feedback on the shots, stuff like that, it's going to feel so good. And that's what all this is about, right? Ultimately, all three of these things are about game feel. Uh, you want to tweak the feel specifically. You want to tweak the feedback specifically. And you want to tweak the audio specifically and polish it and make it good. But ultimately, all of these things are combined into one, which is kind of game feel. You want the game to feel good. And audio does a fantastic job of, of kind of delivering that and adding bass adding elements, um, again, along with like number two, the feedback, making sure that the sound effects happen as soon as the, the button gets pressed, as soon as the, the trigger gets fired, uh, making things responsive, making things quick, but also sound juicy, like sound like, you know, thick. If it's a big explosion, it needs to sound bassy and beefy. If it's, um, you know, if like you're a big giant monster, uh, Terminator thing and people are, you're like 20 feet tall and humans are shooting bullets at you. Maybe don't make those sound like clunk, clunk, clunk. Maybe make those sound like ding, ding. Like it's just bouncing off the armor, right? The type of sound that you pick for a specific thing makes a ton of difference. It, it tells players so much about what's happening in the world. And like for the bullet thing is a perfect example. If, if a player is shooting this giant robot, and it's making a kathunk sound every time it hits them, they might think that they're doing damage. But if it's like a reflective sound, like a ding, ding, bouncing off, then I'm like, oh, maybe I'm not doing damage. So audio, I feel like, is the number one thing you can polish. There's a lot more stuff to polish. Uh, you gotta be, you gotta figure out what specifically in your game needs, needs a little bit of that. But the main thing that you should be looking for the whole time is like game feel. Does this make it feel better? Does this, does this add some feedback to the player? Does this add, you know, a little bit of like overall feel? And it's just, you should always try and like improve that, I think. So I hope this wasn't too confusing. I hope I explained everything good enough. Uh, this is just kind of how I think of it. Um, I know there are other ways to do it. I know there are better, more experienced people than me out there uh, doing this and, and figuring out what to polish. But this is just kind of what I look for. I hope you found it useful. If you've got an order of things that you polish in or things that you like to polish or things that you think are really important, leave those in the comments down below because we all learn from each other here. We're a giant community. Uh, but once again, my name is Tim Russwick, and I'll see you again tomorrow.